Hello, I'm local democracy reporter Emma Draper, and I've been speaking to Ramsey MHK Laurie Hooper about the ongoing situation with the Northern Civic Immunity site. He believes the government needs to be stepping in to sort out the problems. Well, it's crazy, isn't it? Let's be honest. I mean, it all comes down to, I think, the... the Individual commissioners wanted to make the best decision for their residents, which generally means lower rates. Um, and we have, obviously, in the North, a significant disagreement between bride commissioners and everybody else as to what the right thing is for the North of the island. And ultimately, I think the Northern Committee and all the commissions up there are, are trying to do the right thing, trying to get bride back around the table. I'm not getting a feeling that that's happening. Ultimately, the risk here is that something will happen to the Northern Immunity Site. We've already seen a letter from the Northern Committee saying without government support, it's going to end up being handed back. I don't think anybody wants to see that. I think having it run locally is the, is the right thing uh, for the North. It's a really good site. It is quite frustrating, I think, to be in this position. Uh, but ultimately, my view is government is probably going to need to step in and act. And I think the easiest way of doing that, because all of this ultimately is about rates and the disparity between how rates are collected in Bride versus everywhere else, is to deal with that issue at source. Basically, look at the way we collect quarry rates and say, well, if that's causing you all of these issues, if that's causing such a, a difficulty, uh, fine, we'll just collect those centrally. Um, and actually that resolves the issue overnight because that will raise, that's the 60 grand that the northern site needs. You could simply say, we'll collect those centrally and uh, use it to fund the northern collective site in the north. And then if Bride wants to come back to the table, their contribution would be based on their residential raceable value, which is a lot lower and actually would significantly reduce their contribution as well. So it seems like a relatively straightforward solution, but it is going to need government, in this case the Treasury, I think, to act to do that. I don't think it's a particularly complex piece of legislation, but I, I'm always in favour of actually tackling these problems rather than just kicking them into the long grass. So to my mind, if the committee, if all the commissioners in the north can't get back around the table and agree something collectively, I would have no problem at all in pushing government to step in and say, we're going to solve this because it needs solving. Do you think that this situation has actually opened up the discussion for rate reform and the need to look at how local authorities are structured? I think it has, but I think I would be nervous about trying to fold anything like this into a massive piece around rate reform. The, the issue we're facing here is very specific to the collection of quarry rates and the way that's dealt with in, a, in one particular area, two areas, I think, but in this case one area. I would be nervous about saying, oh, we're not, we're not going to fix that. What we're going to do instead is we're going to fix the whole rating system on the island and then nothing will happen. That's Tim Wald's nas- national solution with these things. Is oh yeah, yeah, we'll just leave it. We'll fix everything all at once. It's not going to happen. So uh, my view is let's fix this particular issue and then have a bigger conversation about rate reform because th- the rate reform disparity is pretty big as an issue, especially in Ramsey because we see the way that works and the disparities you have with, with people literally the other side of the, the town boundary and the whole system is definitely in need of a shake-up. But in this instance, I think there is a relatively simple fix that solves the issue around the northern amenity site which secures that for the people of the north which will help everyone in the north actually be the right thing to do and then there is a conversation to be had around okay what does this mean then for rate reform more broadly what will you be doing to try and get the situation resolved so i've already written to the treasury minister asking about this we've had some correspondence from the northern committee as well and i've already responded to them expressing support for the position that i'm outlining so ultimately i'm going to keep on about that and keep pressing them and say treasury you have to act and uh, hopefully that treasury actually taking that situation seriously and taking steps to act will encourage Bride to come back to the table and actually reach some kind of agreement with the rest of the North. That is always the best solution, is get people to agree to things. Uh, But ultimately, we've been elected as national politicians to tackle these problems, to make these sort of decisions. And if government can step in with a solution that is fair and makes sense for everybody, it really should. What correspondence have you had from residents about the situation? I I know it's clear from social media that people are unhappy about the number of closures and the changes that have been made to the site. So what have you had from residents? So yeah, it's been quite a lot actually I think most people that I've talked to understand it understand the context that you know because Bride have pulled out that's created a financial shortfall and so in the short term there needs to be some way of plugging that gap which I think is why the committee have decided to make reductions in service the question that's being asked is well what does that mean does it mean government steps in and pays for it out of our taxes or does it mean that all the rates and everywhere else in the north go up to compensate and that's really only a question that the committee themselves can answer people are definitely not happy with things like the closure of the reuse site up there and, and some of the restrictions but I think everyone understands understands why the committee have had to do this and have been pushed into this position. So I think there would be quite a lot of support, in Ramsey at least, for uh, reforming the way this is dealt with to actually have it resolved rather than have this sit on a shelf and wait for uh, such a long time to be fixed. Have you spoken, I know you said there that you've spoken to the committee, but have you spoken to the commissioners at all about the situation or even bride commissioners about the situation? 
Uh, so I've spoken with uh, a couple of individual commissioners in Ramsey. I'm trying to organise a meeting at the moment. Just have we have regular catch-ups anyway, so it's almost certainly going to be something that comes up at our next regular commissioners and MHK catch-up that we have. I have spoken with a few of them. I've spoken with a few of the officers and the town clerk down there as well. And there was a public meeting quite recently that I attended, and there was a lot of engagement there between lots of residents, actually residents of Bride, residents of, of the North and, and the Northern Committee. Bride didn't send a representative. I think there were one or two commissioners maybe in the audience, but they didn't actually send someone there. So there hasn't been any of that engagement. I'm because this is very much a local authority matter, is isn't really for me to step in at that local authority level, if that makes sense. I think because it's become such an issue, because it's now escalated to that national stage, now's the time when an MHK or the MHKs of, of the North really need to get involved, and that's kind of where we're at, I think. Your fellow Northern MHK, Tim Johnston, said he wants to see a roundtable discussion with all the parties that are affected, involved. Yeah. Is that something you would agree with and you'd like to see? I, I think that's the, that's the, where I would have always started with this, is to say, get them back around the table. My understanding is that's been tried. And, and hasn't got anywhere. Tim's obviously in a very different position because he has six parishes to represent, one of which being Bride and the other's obviously not. Whereas from a Ramsey perspective, I think the view of Ramsey collectively would be this is unfair. It isn't right that actually one party can unilaterally have such a big impact on everybody else in the North. We are all in this together, ultimately. Uh, so yes, a roundtable discussion, get everyone talking, see if they can find an agreed solution would absolutely be the preferred route. Uh, but I think, as with everything, where government has the ability to act, we need to be working on that because if that roundtable discussion doesn't happen doesn't happen quickly enough or happens but doesn't resolve anything government's going to have to step in and say well we left you try it yourselves it didn't work so we're going to go to Tim and we're going to change the rules it's that simple and where do you think the £67,000 should come from? Uh, well like I say the quarry rate that's paid at the minute roughly is about that it, it, it isn't any more complicated than that the bride rate payers actually don't strictly speaking contribute to the northern site because the amount of money that they pay in pretty much comes from the quarry rate and so this is rate that's already collected it already goes into the pot so it isn't any different from saying well last year that's what you paid in and next year it's what you're going to pay in it's the same same amount of money essentially uh, the only other option would be to increase rates everywhere else or take the money out of the tax system which inevitably has, has knock-on impacts so unless people want to pay more money so that bride can have a reduction in their own rateable value then the fair solution is to say well we'll just take those rates that are already being paid and use those to fund the thing that we were already funding with it. Ultimately, there will be a knock-on impact, but I would rather there be an impact on a smaller number of people rather than impact on, on everybody in the North. Thank you for making it to the end of the Manx Radio newscast. You are obviously someone with exquisite taste. May I politely suggest you might want to subscribe to this and a wide range of Manx Radio podcasts at your favourite podcast provider so our best bits will magically appear on your smartphone. Thank you.